Arriving here and now welcoming whatever is present in this moment. Pausing and checking in with the body from the bottoms of the feet to the top of the head. Checking in with the breath. Noticing where the breath is traveling in the body. And the quality of the breath right now. Checking in with the heart, the heart space. Dropping awareness in the heart and noticing what the heart feels like now. And checking in with the mind. Any thought forms that may be drifting through and by. And simply noticing and welcoming all that is here for us. and inviting the sound of the singing bowl to wash over and through and welcome us into this space together. Gently opening the eyes if they aren't open already. And welcome, welcome to Spiraling Within. I am Paling, and here we spiral within the present moment together. And it's such a joy to be here with our wonderful guest today. Would you like to introduce yourself? Hello listeners, I'm Michael Beckhart, and I'm here on Spiraling Within. Yeah. And so, Michael, we connected. You were my guitar teacher for a couple months. It was yeah. it was the turn of the new year. It was 2020, end of 2021, and I was suddenly inspired to dive into guitar. <laughs> like, I've had a guitar for a year, but then I was like, I kind of want to see and explore what it's like to be intentional about if I can, you know, just invest some time and energy into playing guitar and learning guitar. And then through the wet, the internet, I found you and we had some wonderful lessons and I felt like we, I just really enjoyed your presence and your teaching style. And just, I felt a, a joyful connection with you. Yeah. And then when I started this podcast, cause I, ended up stopping guitar lessons because I felt complete with guitar for me at that time. But when I started this podcast, I sent out a message and you were truly like an, like an angel who was just perfectly divinely aligned. And I was so grateful because after the first episode and I went to do audio editing on it, I was like, man, this is not my, this is, this is not what jazzes me, the audio editing and like getting in the nitty gritty of the files and yeah, no, that's not where I shine and sparkle (laughs) with joy and all those things. But thank goodness for like community and connections. And and so you essentially put yourself forth when I put out a call and asked the universe for an audio editor. And so you've been supporting us and spiraling within behind the scenes this whole time. And I'm just so grateful. So, so grateful. Yeah. Well, a little bit of context for the listeners is, um, 
as you said, we, we met each other online and you were really one of, you, you know, I, we're not supposed to say this as teachers, but you one of my favorite students because you always <laughs> showed up so prepared. Mm. And on top of that, you were, you made so many astute observations about just you know, the way that you were playing the guitar, like all these things that even myself as a musician took me a very long time to realize. Where I was like, wow, I'm beginning to like slouch in my posture. Mm. And that's actually effect affecting my agility or my dexterity and all these different things that you were starting to pick up. And I just really appreciated having that time with you. And you always listen to me, which I really appreciated you. A lot of times, um, people don't realize that when you have a conversation that, um, Especially like when you're a teacher, they think that you're just there to show them music, but really the whole conversation is a lesson. Mm -hmm. You always treated our time as that. And I really appreciated your presence in my class. Mm. So it was great having you as a student and yeah. um, feel very passionate as an educator. And I um, have had maybe over, I haven't counted, but I've, I've been teaching for over two years now. Uh, professionally, I've been teaching mm -hmm. since I was 16, actually. I've had a few different jobs in education, but um, I think now um, the way I've been doing it now, a little more uh, part-time, full-time, mm -hmm. I've had over 100 students, and I've just made amazing bonds with my students. Mm -hmm. So I kind of started doing the whole education thing once lockdown hit. And before that, I was uh, pursuing music. Uh, I still am pursuing music. I am doing music. Mm -hmm. and, and making music, which we can um, talk yeah. about later. And, but you know, it doesn't always cover all, all your responsibilities. So before mm -hmm. I was, um, before the lockdown, I was waiting tables and doing just like odd jobs here and there. And I saw this opportunity for me to reinvent myself. And I was like, what do I really mm. like? What's something I feel really passionate about? And there are a few different things that I actually did through a lockdown. And, and one of them was get really into education. I felt I feel really passionate about education. I feel that the world would be a better place if it was readily available to more people. Mm. I felt that I could also give back what I have learned, you know, and help other people. And through these two years, I've gotten really close to all my students. And when you were offered, you were like, hey, I'm going to start this newsletter um, to be a part of it. I was so excited to be a part Aww. of the newsletter. And that's how I saw. Payling was like, oh, I'm looking for an audio editor. So for those of you listening, I'm the one who's cleaning up all the audio files yeah. for the audio side of the podcast. Yeah, and that's, I'm so, mm, the newsletter that you're referencing in case that someone is listening and, and isn't receiving my newsletter, it's called Inspiral Luminescence, and I, I send it out each week. And yeah, the it's like the magic of connections <laughs> and also just when we put something out there as just like this open invitation and then just trust that what is meant to be just kind of comes through that I think that encounter with you and that experience of it was just so affirming and validating for everything that I like believe in life about just synchronicity and divine alignment and all those things. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. And, and it was the same thing for me on the other mm, side. I felt like there was a, I don't know, there's this moment of synchronicity. So yeah. Yeah. So with your passion for education, I love that you, how you shared that the pandemic was this, and I think that it was this case for many people, this opportunity to pivot, to, to catalyze change in your life and where did that like what are those those seeds of that passion like where do you even as you kind of envision or speak about your love for educating and serving in that way like where do you feel that like is it coming from your heart like i'm just kind of curious what your body or your like felt sense of that passion comes from yeah well i'm tuning in right now i'm asking yeah myself. i haven't thought of it that way um yeah, I do believe that it's in my heart, um, maybe in my throat as well. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and in my third eye. Mm-hmm. And I guess that's where it exists at mm -hmm. this time. And um, I guess my passion for education really came from 
having a very strong education. My parents always believed in education. Um, you know, I come from a lovely family. If mom and dad, if you're listening, I love you. <laughs> and two things they always put first was our health and then our education. Mm. And they never gave us any other limitations. They just wanted us to, to know things and to be aware and whatnot. And uh, my parents very much believed in the craft of critical thinking. So mm. I was, you know, I was put into schooling that kind of propagated that. Um, what does that just just pausing there for a moment because critical think, critical thinking is like a phrase that has um, you know popped up in my awareness recently and just noticing my evolving relationship with that but what does critical thinking and and what does that mean to you based on I guess your education and then what's your relationship to that now yeah I would say maybe going backwards mm -hmm. is what I'm realizing now about critical thinking is that I don't always remember all the facts and all the things that I learned in high school or middle school or mm -hmm. before that, you know, um, or even college, some of the things more mm -hmm. recently, uh, for where I am in my life. But critical thinking is having the tools to be able to effectively question a point of view mm. because we've proven over time. And even in school, you'll learn this, that's, um, knowledge can be absolute you know we can knowledge can then be changed you know it's like oh mm -hmm. like the world used to be flat for instance mm -hmm. you know it's like oh my god if you sail across the sea there's actually another side mm -hmm. a whole other continent all these different things um or like we don't revolve the universe doesn't revolve around the earth rather mm -hmm. the earth spins around the sun um and inside our solar system that's spinning inside of a galaxy etc and all these different things have changed over time. So it's like, how do you, how do you manage to find the questions to, to question these things? And part of it is like being a little bit of a skeptic. Mm. And part of it is also having the ability to put yourself um, in the shoes of both sides of the question, of the yes and the no. If you're mm -hmm. thinking about it in a binary form, which a lot of times things aren't so black and white. Mm -hmm. um, so that's why it's, it's fun to live in the gray area and think about these things. And I didn't realize the value of my education until I went to college and I was around mm. other people um, who went to different schools. Um, I actually went to the same school my entire life um, up until college. Mm. Um, and then I went to two colleges. And once I got there, I realized that, you know, certain people didn't have um, great writing skills or they would just, you know, um, do what they were told or. Mm -hmm. mm, I don't know, a bunch of different yeah. things. And, and then that was really surprising to me or that people knew like facts really well. Something that I always had a lot of trouble with that in the U S um, I, I really just despise is like multiple choice questions, mm. especially because there's always like one answer that's more correct than the other, even though sometimes other answers may be correct. Mm -hmm. And I was like, how am I supposed <laughs> to put this together? Um, I'd rather just like write it out or, yeah. I show my proofing if it's like a, I don't know, whatever it might be. Mm -hmm. So I'd say that now that's what I realize my relationship to it is, is realizing that I have the ability to question mm -hmm. and that questioning allows me to then, um, explore possibilities of the answer. Um, and that's all the critical thinking is mm -hmm. and, um, and, and, and finding joy and fun in that, you know, I, I love watching a movie and being like, wow, I wonder if this foreshadows something that's going to happen then, you know, later in the scene. Yeah. So I, I'm a really big, um, a Marvel nerd. So I'm really, Oh my gosh. I superhero stuff. I, Oh my gosh. I'm so, I have literally just been down a Marvel, Marvel, a Marvel no rabbit kidding. hole this past week. I was rewatching because I'm preparing for Thor love and thunder. <laughs> what are you even watching? You gotta, so I watched, you gotta tell me what I, you um, watching. I rewatched. What did I rewatch? Oh, I rewatched the. Inf oh, because do you know what it was? I saw something about the Age of Ultron, and then I realized that I actually never watched that film, or the when I watched it, I didn't really watch it through. So, I watched the Age of Ultron. Because why was I doing that? Wasn't there a recent one? Oh, there was Moon Knight that came out. <laughs> so I watched Moon Knight, and then I watched. Which even that, I I kind of. Um, tempered not tempered myself i was like asking myself do i want to watch this because 
The thing about the Marvel movies, which I love, is that they are so multidimensional and cosmic, and they get to display aspects of reality that I do experience and believe are real, and just like experience is real. But then you, I loved it how you described the gray area versus seeing just the right and wrong. Oftentimes, there can be in in many movies, but in Marvel movies, this dichotomy between good and evil, or there is a light and there is a dark. And um, yeah, the, that that is often the realm that it's portrayed. And with, with Moon Knight, I think that's very much, you know, there's just even the coloring of like white and black and, and da, da, da. but so that was Moon Knight. And then I watched Age of Ultron and I rewatched that and I was like, oh, this is, because even that it deals with like AI and technology and our relationship to technology. There's so many relevant things. And then what did I do? Oh, and then I rewatched the Infinity War, <laughs> the, oh, End Games. And then I rewatched, I skimmed through original Thor with just like the the first Thor one, because I haven't seen that in ages. And I was just like, oh, this is a very different tone. But then I skimmed through Ragnarok, because I, I enjoy Taika Waititi's oh, Ragnarok, like, yeah. yeah. That's where like mm -hmm. Thor really picks up. He's like, wow, oh, this is a great character. Yeah, and then getting yeah. to see just chronologically... I just love the how interwoven and like connected all of the things are and you can watch it and be like oh my god they referenced that here and this is where the thing was and they were planting these seeds and these easter eggs for this later thing that would happen it's incredible the craft that they have yeah. um to just the whole script and the way that it's in, like it's just all interconnected and wo woven into this mm -hmm. universe, literally. And they're just expanding. Like, yeah, it's literally outrageous. like us. <laughs> it's like it's this mirror of actual reality and the way that the the experience of being on Earth went from being linear and one dimensional or, or you know, 3D or whatnot. But then it's this expansion of consciousness and embracing the multidimensionality of everything. Have you seen um, everything everywhere all at once? No, my uh, friend keeps on texting me every day, and he's like, "You gotta watch it." Yes. It. Oh my gosh. Yes. So that'll that'll be on that'll be on your list. But I watched that last week, and that's just like another just cool thing of getting to see things being created that are reflecting multidimensionality and all yeah, just all these different facets. And then most recently, I rewatched Black Panther. But I haven't seen I haven't seen the new Spider Man and I haven't seen I don't know if it's out yet, the new Doctor Strange. Those ones I haven't seen. It is out, yeah. It's I think it's probably just getting out of theaters. Oh, it's it's leaving theaters. Leaving theaters, oh. yeah. Well, it'll come on to Disney Plus at some it'll point. <laughs> exactly. I, yeah, yeah, so I don't know why we talked about what, what how did Marvel come up? <laughs> Oh, just, you know, just I was saying how I love mind bending, like mm. movies and stuff. Yeah. And, like, I just love questioning, like, all kinds mm. of things. And when I'm watching something, it's a part of it. And I think that that's made me, it's helped me as a creative as well. Mm -hmm. And circling back to your question about um, how my schooling made me a yeah. thinker versus now, um, I was kind of going backwards. I think in my schooling, what really helped as well was that we were applying it to concepts all the time. Right? Mm. And um, we always had like uh, two languages, math, a science, a humanities, and something else uh, that you could choose. Uh, I chose an art of course. And it was just really fun applying these concepts to different like, areas of knowledge. And it was fun, it was so much fun. And something that I realized a lot about my friends um, is that we all have a really strong connection because of the way that we were schooled mm. and we're all very reflective people and we're all very open mm -hmm. um, so I find that the people that I grew up with were all putting ourselves into new situations all the time trying to experience and to connect with others because you learn I mean you learn best empirically right um, even though like the part of the oral tradition of passing down knowledge is really helpful. There's mm -hmm. nothing like living it for yourself. So I don't know if that answers your question, but Oh, absolutely. And I just, yeah. I really resonate before the whole Marvel tangent. I really resonate with the way that you were talking about critical thinking. Cause that, yeah, it's this critical thinking might not be the, the words that I would use to describe that nowadays, but it's this open, it's just open-mindedness and 
this curiosity and engagement with life and this willingness to kind of rotate the planet like oh is it flat let me just turn it around and like see and and check it out and feel what it is in my body and the way that it's like life can be this sequence of experiments that we're just playing with and it getting to explore and discover and then iterating and this continual um discovery and curiosity and i think my relationship though in the past like i the with the multiple with the multiple choice questions even just the way that testing was in school there was a right and wrong <laughs> like there there was a specific answer that someone something some authority like the the grading authority was looking for a correct answer and i i can so relate to that well actually no i can't when i was in school that i was that was great for me <laughs> cuz i was like very adept at honing in on the answer that they were looking for like i was very um yeah just in key and tune yeah key yeah tuned into the the program that was playing out and then but i can whereas now i can relate to what you're saying of just the preferring to just like write a short answer <laughs> like just that openness and that spaciousness to be like this is actually where i'm coming from here is the context of the answer and just being more there's a engaged yes I yeah feel yeah, yeah more engaged with an answer or with a question rather mm -hmm. um, when i'm given an opportunity to express myself about it and it's so interesting that way like then you actually are you are say we're, say that we're talking about an actual test and you're the greater of the test then you're actually engaging with that individual's perspective their unique point of view and what they are bringing to and contributing to that question and you're getting to experience that engagement versus you know with multiple choice or something that is right or wrong mm -hmm. it's mm, almost a little less it, it's a little less personal or <laughs> individual which that can be that can absolutely function and serve a purpose too mm -hmm. absolutely yeah it's not like you're just it's different when you just you sit down and circle a box as opposed mm -hmm. to you get to engage with the question it is a lot more personable yeah. yeah well and also i think it's interesting that we're talking about tests and these types of things so i'm reflecting on just guitar lessons with you and something that i noticed that you do and really appreciated was at the beginning you kind of do this like check in or even just like these like mini quizzes <laughs> which is these check ins with uh, skill wise and also like content wise like what is a scale or what is a note you know the, whatever those questions were and also though cuz there are those you know with playing the guitar it's like okay are you playing on time like is are the strings buzzy? There are certain facets that you can listen to that are maybe a little bit more technical that, you know, a multiple choice question might be, might serve that type of thing. Like, oh, how many states are there in the United States? Like, that's the, type, you yeah, know. Yeah, there's a clear answer to that. Yes, there's a clear answer. But then also embracing the formlessness or just the creative expression like i think one of the my favorite things from our lessons was at some point just you're like why don't you just play through the c major scale but just like not have a, anything in mind just kind of like play with it and improv mm -hmm. and just like let your let even regardless of what it sounds like and and not knowing where you're going to go and that is like doing the short answer question where it's like oh what it's a unique expression of paling in that moment. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Yeah. When, so for, for those listening, yeah, I guess you've tapped into a little bit of my teaching style, um, mm -hmm. especially when I'm teaching music is I like to, I do want to check in with the skills. Um, firstly, to see if you're practicing, right. To make sure that you're keeping up with it. 
And if you're not, that's okay. That's fine. Mm -hmm. And we're, we have that time together to build upon that and to strengthen it. And really what we're trying to cr create are like neural pathways and strengthen that neuroplasticity so that when you play certain scales or when you stumble upon certain techniques um, in a more improv improv improvisational setting, you have more of an agility and an ease to access those things. Mm -hmm. And so I do, at every opportunity, want to encourage my students to improvise as well. Because that's also, that's also something that needs to be practiced. Just mm -hmm. as much as your scales and everything else is the ability, or not so much the ability, but the feeling of comfort of inside mm. of the space of, of nowness and music. Mm -hmm. And that's not something that I felt for a long time as a musician that was actually taught to me, not until I got to college. Mm. It was actually something I saw in other musicians was that when, when I, you know, growing up to school that I went to, I was the only musician. Mm. I was the only musician in my school, believe it or not. Well, at least in my class, I was the only musician mm -hmm. in my class. There was maybe four of us all together. And uh, we were scattered in different classes. Um, so we were close. We all knew each other, but we didn't collaborate together necessarily mm -hmm. just because of the age difference and, you know, different things going on because of that in our classes. You know, you had certain requirements like exams or trips mm -hmm. and stuff you had to do. And when I got to college, I realized that my entire music background, which I did outside of school, um, had never encouraged me to to improvise or to find mm. that expression. Though I would do it on my own, I didn't realize that there were tools that I could mm. use or learn and acquire to become better at that. And it seems silly, but I wasn't listening. Mm. Right? Especially with um, string players, anyone who's listening who plays a string instrument, uh, particularly a fretted instrument, they will understand that um, you can really just abide and follow shapes. Mm. Now the shapes are there for what I was saying before is that you're trying to strengthen those connections so that you know where to go on. It's like when you're speaking. When you're speaking in a way you're improvising, right? Um, it's a language. You're just saying certain things, but it took you a very long time to learn how to say those words, the syntax, and put them into a certain order. But it's the same thing with music. You have to take the time to learn the syntax. You have to take the time to learn um, what order you like best. But there's actually a lot more freedom and flexibility inside of music as opposed to uh, verbal language. Uh, but there are still certain things there in place that we have learned and conditions are conditioned our mm -hmm. mind and, and brain to over time to enjoy and find aesthetically pleasing. So we like to do those things. And sometimes we like to challenge them to incite other feelings. Be it on anger, fear, mm -hmm. um, sadness, right? Other things that um, we can also learn to evoke inside of a musical yeah. setting. That was one and of the coolest things that you incorporated into our lessons was just the history of music part. And I love you had shared about just, I feel like you have a very global context of that you bring and a glo very global perspective to just what you what you share and the just that I like the notes that we are familiar with in this particular context in this particular time in history as well that it's like C D E F G A B like that's there are infinite sounds in between that in other cultures and other traditions of music they actually play with those in between spaces that seem like they're in between for us because it's like do 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 yeah, you know yeah yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah i love that and something that we I actually actually never brought up in class but um we even have different tuning systems across different eras mm. so the music that was made or composed in baroque music if you if you go to like an authentic concert um they will play in the tuning of a baroque style and um it'll sound different because yeah. it's in a different tuning system so it, I find it really important to introduce to my students as quickly as possible that music is global and that music is of people and that because it's so widely expressed, there are so many different ways to do it. Mm -hmm. Therefore, if you find yourself breaking the strings or retuning the guitar just to find something cool, mm. that's okay because that's how other people did at one point and they found what they thought to be beautiful. 
Mm. And that's kind of what I want circling back to just learning to listen is that what I want to show my students um, as a music educator is to listen to themselves and to find the beauty that is already within them. And oftentimes, like when I was learning music, I wasn't taught that. I was just told to like learn a lot of songs, know all your scales, mm -hmm. know some theory. And there's definitely days where I question like, what's the point of all this? Like I didn't get it. Mm -hmm. um, but you know, maybe it's thanks to those. I'm thankful for, for all of that because then when I did come to a place of listening, I had this very, very strong foundation of music theory mm -hmm. um, that allowed me to support that. Um, or some people come, come at it the, the other way around and they're like, well, I just already hear everything. So it's hard mm -hmm. for me to understand it. And I've met people that way. So there's, there are definitely two different ways of approaching music. Ideally you're doing both simultaneously. Um, but I do think it's important to learn yeah. to listen, um, as soon as possible. And you know, it's like, mm. how often do you listen to music? And do you think of, um, of a melody moving up or down? Mm. A lot of times people listen to music and they experience kind of like this homogenous burst of emotion. Mm -hmm. But within that homogenous burst of emotion, there's all these different constituents, you know, that sum up to make this whole that moves through you. Mm -hmm. And the sum of all those different parts could be, you know, the rhythm um, and the rhythm amongst the entire orchestration or instrumentation, the arrangement, the way that it, you know, it climbs peaks mm -hmm. and then it rides down the valley. So it can climb and peak again. So there's all these different parts. It's like, how, how often do you think about why it is that it makes you feel that way? Mm. And the best way to do that is to learn to listen. And the best way to do that is to listen to what you're doing and what you find to be beautiful. Yeah. And those, the, the ways of listening to music, even the ways of listening to ourselves, like it was only when I, because I did, you know, a year of piano when I was younger, but music didn't really, it was only when I started doing sing, voice lessons, singing lessons at the end of 2019, that really music had suddenly become this significant portion of, of my life. And in engaging with the creation of music, it's totally shifted my entire relationship with how I experience music. It's kind of going behind the curtain and being like, oh my gosh, this is how things are created. And like, yes, even maybe that's like from a songwriting perspective or a music theory of like arranging things or the technical aspects of how you actually get a piano to sound nice when you're accompanying yourself singing or a guitar. How do you like do these things? But with the voice, it's like, it just amazes me how because I would say that my, my voice is my primary instrument and it amazes me how just these tiny, like fine tuning, subtle adjustments. And there are so many going back to ja that infinite possibilities of open mindedness. There are all these infinite paths to producing what can seem like the same sound. And so it's like, I could, and a lot of what I've been doing most recently with my singing is unlearning a lot of habits, like those those grooves that I developed about of how I was singing or ways of producing sound. Very tension, like a lot of tension and a lot of straining Absolutely. and a lot of like yeah, muscle engagement. Mm -hmm. A lot of people don't know that they're already breathing, like they're just making it harder on their body to breathe. Yeah, and, and that's the same. Fingers, you know? I mean, that's the same with any instrument, right? It's like these habits, or even recently I picked up golf and just like noticing, no yeah, kidding. you know, yeah, golf, golf and golf you do? Oh, cool. I do. I used to, yeah, it brings me back to, uh, it was one of like those activities that I did with my dad growing up. Yeah. It, you know, just like I would have my plastic clubs. Oh. Of course, I just walk around and hit my like oh. this big ball, like plastic <laughs> golf ball. This big, just so I can play with it. Oh. Like, yeah, golf is a lot of fun. Oh my gosh, that's so cute. I have very different memories with playing golf with my dad growing up. I it was it was going back to just what I was saying about unlearning tension. It was shrouded in frustration and just like it was a very. Uh, not fun experience for me because my dad was just more of like a a, a dictator approach of of educ <laughs> educating, <laughs> but that has since evolved. So getting yeah, to like, like return your posture, yes, arm straight. Yeah, yeah. It was just 
Mm-hmm. But so getting to before you hit the ball, yeah, right? <laughs> all yeah. the things, yeah. and then and then just the frustration I would experience because I was you know holding so much tension and, and wanted so desperately to hit it right and for it to like go well that then you know it was just a very frustrating experience. So I'm so grateful to get to go back and unlearn patterns and bring this fresh perspective. This was something that I wanted to circle back to of what you were describing about your journey of not learning to listen or really being exposed to this whole other aspect of your relationship to music. And when you went to college, I think in some ways it's like, that's what I experience with academics or even just approaching thought or just being a human. It's like, I had this was very much in this rigid, linear, structured, analytical, like A plus B equals C, like this is what you do, you input these equations, like you input these things into the equation of life and then you get these outputs of success or achievement. And then, so I'm so glad that I got to embody that and then like just in my own journey of evolution and just like self-reflection and inquiry and all these things, now get to be like, oh yeah, that actually wasn't, that wasn't it, like that wasn't all that there is to life and I can hold that experience with the gratitude for the skills that it offered me because it definitely gave me like tangible skills with certain things, but I get to now choose to incorporate both or to do those, both do those things from a different place rather than a, rather than the, the narrow perspective of this is the way that life should be. It's like, oh, life is actually infinite. And then I can act, I can just call upon those skills to support that creative expression, just like you were talking about of having a certain skill set can support your improvisation. <laughs> and then the yeah. structure supports the flow in life. You know, it's the, it's the whole yin yang thing. <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. And I was saying something about something else. Well, I have a question for you. Yeah, go. Oh, ooh, know. fun. <laughs> Circling back to, you know, I do this with, with, you know, as I think it's really important. I had this one teacher. Most of my teaching style all comes from my favorite teachers. Mm. One of my favorite teachers, um, his name is Pat Patterson. Mm-hmm. And at Berkeley, when I was at Berkeley College of Music, he was my lyric teacher. And he made us all sit down and really ask ourselves why we were in that class. Mm. He was like, I don't care why you're here, but I care that you know why you're here. Because mm. that's going to that's going to have an effect on the efforts that you make mm-hmm. that you're going to take in this class. And I didn't have them until like my last semester. And I was like, wow, I wish mm. I had thought about this with every single lesson. And, um, and I learned a lot about learning in college, which I loved. And so I tried to bring that into all of my lessons where at the beginning, I make it very clear. It's like, why, why are you here? I want them to tell me and I'll explain to them all uh, my experience, my lived experience as a musician, everything that I know and how I can help them. And if that resonates with them, then we'll continue. It's an agreement And the agreement is as well. It's like, I don't want to ever stress on my students. It's like, if you don't have time, it's okay. But I never want you to lie to me. Right. Mm. Uh, when I first started teaching a lot of times, my students would kind of lie to me and be like, Oh, hmm. I have to do my homework. And you can tell, like, you know, when someone hasn't worked mm-hmm. on it, when you're on the other side of things, when you've reached a level in your craft, you can tell when, so- when someone else that you're helping isn't working on theirs. And so I've kind of adopted a new policy. Um, also thanks to my, my teachers, which is like, um, encouraging them to do it for themselves as opposed mm-hmm. to for this class. And when it is for themselves, you find that they come back and they yield better results. And though there's going to be weeks here and there where that like, you just don't circle around. So that's okay. And you just have to remind them that it's about, um, that it's a long-term goal mm-hmm. and, and just keep on working on that. And I, Oh, I think I went on too far of a tangent. I can't remember what I was going to say. <laughs> I remember now what I wanted to ask you was that I remember sitting down with you and asking you what your intentions were. And I want to know now, uh, with where you are now and, um, kind of starting your business and everything, what is it that you would like this part of music to fulfill mm. in your life? 
Right? Yeah, that's a... <laughs> That's a, that's so that's quite, my question, yeah. Oh my gosh, yeah, that's that's quite a question that I am grateful to be asked because I've definitely been kind of over the past couple months my relationship to that of like, okay, what is what is music here for me as like what I'm and what is this yeah, we're just we're just what is that role in my life? Like, what what is it? What's going on? That's essentially my question to myself. It's like, what is going on? I find that I going back to that question that I had asked you of where does your passion of education come from? It's I very much have similar like activated like centers when I'm engaging with this or just creative expression. It's like it's coming from my heart, my throat, which is my like free expression, and then also third eye of just the vision that I hold for, for myself and for the world and for all that is. And I think the simplicity of it, of just coming back, I have something on my wall right there that I painted in my freshman year of college. And it says, pursue what sets your heart on fire. And there was something even then that... That's lovely. <laughs> pursue what sets your heart on fire. And that was my reminder to myself that it's like, okay, what is it that lights me up? I felt like through school and through life, I was constantly, I was waiting for a spark. I was, I felt like I was waiting for the thing that I was like, what is my passion? Like I can, I am capable, like I have skill sets and I know that I'm capable of doing whatever I want. Things. Yes. Yeah. All of the options are here, but then what is the thing that is actually sparking me that is inspiring me and it was only in the past couple years that I even like discovered that I think singing was one thing that I just the fact that I just enjoy the and I think that tells you something when you enjoy working on it and when you enjoy practicing it and when you enjoy just being in the journey of it that's like that's information that's like feedback for me and my system of like okay there's something for me here the fact that it is continually nourishing and i genuinely just enjoy being in the weeds in the process in the development regardless it's not for me about like an outcome and that would take so, you very far let me tell you that yeah and that well, yeah and that like so then a couple months or just in this first half of this year that question of, okay, I know that I'm just continually guided back to my heart and what it is that fills me with joy and lights me up because that is service. <laughs> like that is everything. I know that like my purpose just in general, like many of us is just here to serve and to contribute to all that is in the way that is in alignment with my heart in alignment with my joy in alignment with even just like the way that my physical body and system moves like how how much sleep i get at night or just the the structure or flow of my day so all of these these are components and i'm kind of spiraling around the the question of music because like why what is here <laughs> What is it? It's like music is just one of the things. I think that, and that's where I am with it now. It's that music is one of the channels of expression that lights me up. Because I think like I've had so, you know, I've had visions of over the past year, just, you know, years I've had visions of me like performing on stage and like singing to like to people publicly and like playing guitar and like singing songs that I've written I've had all of these visions and so I think for a couple months there I was like maybe may maybe that's it maybe I'm here to like be a singer songwriter and just like what is possible that was at the beginning of May I was like what is possible if I just devote myself to that and devote myself to exploring like okay writing music and and da, da, da. and then 
life just like continued to evolve and I just continued to evolve and it continues to be a presence like just this just this week I've had so much fun just like writing songs but it's removing any and I'm would love to hear your relationship with this but it's removing any expectation of music creating or of it's like <laughs> the element of needing it to go somewhere, I think relieves pressure for me. Like the expectation that I'm creating music and I need it to have a certain outcome. Like I need it to, I need to have like a recorded published album or I need to, you know, for yeah, some people. amount to something. Yeah, exactly. Be, um, popularity through your yes. music, right? Yes. And there's a lot of different versions of that. Mm -hmm. Followers, listeners, or. Yeah purchases of your music or maybe it's yeah whatever it might amount to yeah um and whether it's yeah. music or anything that we create as just creative people like with me being in this like continually unfolding journey of my evolving my business it's like what the question of like what is my business <laughs> is something that i continually ask myself and i think it helps me stay present with what is actually true now because what I thought it was is not what it is and what it will be is not what I currently think it is. So like it's being with it in that moment and creating just back to the heart, like creating from the inspiration and the joy of creating itself of loving to like, I love evolving my voice. Like I love the process and the journey of the way that it ripples throughout the entire rest of my life. Like even the way that I'm speaking currently from like just three podcast episodes ago, it's a totally different, like a couple weeks ago I recorded, it was maybe like two hours that I was talking. And at the end I had all this vocal strain. And so it, it invited me to ask myself, like the sensation invited the opportunity for me to reflect on, okay, what is it that I'm doing speaking? Cause I was bringing so much intentionality and awareness to singing, but wasn't translating that into my speaking voice as well, because the voice is with us all day. And I know that I like another thing that I just love. And that's why this, I love this podcast is I love speaking and I love conversing. And I know that that's a way that I'm here to serve is just like chatting and talking and doing that for hours in a day. How do I do that in a way that is feels aligned with my heart and also sustainable for my instrument and feels good and feels easeful. And it went unlearning so much like muscular activation. And so now my sound is just resonating, even though I'm in my chest voice, I'm now only resonating like from my upper, my like hard palate and up, like there's a, it's no longer resonant, like and that's just like, I say it now, but this has been three years in the making. Like this has been it, three years in the making. <laughs> yeah. Someone who's had some vocal instruction, it's a big, big, big milestone to realize, mm -hmm. wow, I can feel my voice in my body yeah. and it's not something we think about a lot. So congratulations. Thank you. It's a, it is. It's a big win. <laughs> yeah. And it's something that you will continue developing. Mm -hmm. Um, it's something that I definitely want to personally, like I would really want to circle back to. Um, but yeah, it's, it's funny how our voice can resonate down to our toes. Literally. Mm -hmm. Um, it, it really does. So yeah, well, thanks for answering the okay. question. I'm so grateful that yeah. you answered that with so many different parts and aspects that all tie back to you. And I just want to take a moment to say that your answer is authentic. <laughs> and that to me is so beautiful to hear, you know, you're mm. not doing it for, you're not doing it for anyone else, but just to, to first serve yourself. And then in turn with that strength to give back to others. Mm -hmm. Right. And you don't have an expectation of it leading somewhere. And as someone who's in the music industry, I see that with a lot of my friends will go astray because they forget why they're doing it. Mm -hmm. Um, some people will abandon music, uh, for years, or I have students who have ab abandoned it for decades. And then, you know, they'll check in with me and I'll help them with a certain skill. And then they realize like, you know, I just, I'm in a place in my life now where I'm ready to make music for myself. Mm -hmm. Or maybe they were already great musicians in the time or at a certain time. And they, 
let go of that because it became something toxic for them because mm-hmm. it wasn't for them. And um, I just, I love that for you. I do. And I think that everyone should take inspiration from that in all the aspects of their life. And I think that for this business that you're building, um, I hate calling it business because it feels unfair for you. Mm. And I prefer to call it a life because mm. I find that you are trying to find all the different things that you feel passionate about. Um, and as you know, as an avid listener of your podcast and someone who knew you um, through this transition, um, I, I don't know all the details, and I love to ask you more questions about that. But yeah. as someone who's who's kind you've of definitely of witnessed an you've witnessed an evolution. <laughs> you have yes. witnessed in over the past six months. <laughs> you've witnessed my like activation. <laughs> yeah, first as um, someone who got to know you through the aspect of like I, I want to do. There, there are these things about music that that inspire me and then realizing that there was this big other side to you and um there it's just your what i love about teaching is that all like all the all these students that i have like they're these developing characters right like in a film or in a book mm-hmm. and there were all these things that i found that you and i kept on um for lack of a, a better term like agreeing with or mm-hmm. finding ourselves in the same wavelength where you were getting your Qigong certification. Mm -hmm. No way. I did three years of Qigong, (laughs) right? Um, Yoga and just Mm -hmm. all these different spiritual things. And though we never like dove into it, there was definitely this agreement where like, there's a a part of us where like, we understand each other. Mm -hmm. And I think that when you meet people who are on that wavelength, um, there's that agreement. Mm -hmm. So it was fun. It was really nice getting to know you that way. And, Circling back to what I was saying about your business, that's why it just feels really unfair to say that it's your business because it feels like you're building your life. Mm-hmm. And unfortunately, a lot of people don't see it that way. But really, you're, 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 um, I want to quote one of my best friends from college. He, he was my roommate actually for three years and um, he was foreign and he had the opportunity to, um, the US government grants foreigners an OPT visa, which is an optional practice training visa, which allows them to stay within the United States for a year or three years if they did um, study something in STEM. Mm-hmm. And that will allow them to work within their field of study for that amount of time. And he opted not to take it, even though it's only available to you immediately after graduation. Mm-hmm. And the reason being was because he wanted to go home because he found the girl of his dreams and he wanted to move in with her and then propose to her. Mm. Yeah, right? Of what she's done all three. Yeah. So I'm proud uh. of him for doing that. And he, I remember asking him, I was like, you only get this one opportunity. Don't you want to do it? Like, for like six months, you have to do the mm-hmm. full year. And he was like, you know, I've been thinking about it and I'm not trying to build my music career. I'm trying to build my life. Mm. And I can go back home to Mexico. He's from Mexico City. And I can have love. I can have my family. Mm-hmm. I, can have my, I have friends and um, friends that are family, and I already have a big network of musicians, and I can have all the things that I want in one place. It's like I don't have to continue looking, and, it, and I thought that was mm. so beautiful and eloquent the way you put it. It's like I'm building my life. I'm not building my music career, and um, and that's what I sense in you, and what I see in you is that you're not making a business. It's I, I, I very clearly see that you're building your life. There are all these different things that you like, and you are trying to figure out what we're all trying to figure out is that we do live within a system, um, and we're trying to figure out how to tend to the responsibilities of the system that allow us to live on a global scale, right? Essentially, that's a fancy way of saying, got to make money, right? So mm-hmm. that's what you're trying to figure out, is how to, and that's why you call it business. But don't forget that you're building your life, I'd say, and... and on this journey not that you need that advice you don't seem like you need it but well i'm just so grateful because (laughs) i'm so grateful that you shared that for anyone like listening watching but also just for me that even the story about your your friend it was so moving and i just so resonate with it and such a testament to your that you see that like it's so beautiful that you see that because that is what i'm feel like i'm doing i'm each moment, like every now moment is an opportunity to 
live our dreams. Like the things that we view as our dreams as being these like distant things out there one day, someday, it's like, I can actually just choose to create that for myself now. And in doing so, it's like, yeah, it's exactly what your friends like, we don't have to either or pick between the things that we love. It's like, we actually can have all the things <laughs> we can enjoy all of the things we can have the love and the connection and fulfilling our purpose. And yeah, with the, there is that element of money and making money and, you know, just supporting. It's really just being in the fact that we're in this like physical plane system that currently has like money as a thing. And there's that element of engaging in the system while also evolving the system. <laughs> like that's kind of what it feels like the, the, the business aspect is it's almost like in order part of my path of like evolving or contributing or serving is by doing business a different way <laughs> and Absolutely. by serving, you know, and that's, and that's so exciting. Oh, yeah, sorry. Go ahead. Yeah. I'm sorry. I didn't mean to cut you off. That was <laughs> something that, um, pops into my head as you said that I was like, you, you're inspiring others also to, to lead their life this way. Right. And you, uh, I would say that it's something that you are doing is that, um, it's something that hasn't really been available to us mm. for centuries, you know, and <laughs> it's only like, I think the internet has allowed a lot of, mm -hmm. that's something I love about the internet is that the internet has allowed all these new opportunities for us to be more creative about the way that we can live our lives. Mm -hmm. And I love seeing how you are doing, you're doing that in, um, you're within this certain path. And I love listening to everyone on this podcast because you're connecting with people who are, um, for the most part from the listeners I've heard are kind of in the same path and you're all helping each other out. Um, so yeah, I, th I think that you are offering something very new and unique and, um, and I just love that you're doing that. So. Mm. And the cool thing is it's like, it connects with your philosophy and your ethos as well about supporting others in listening to themselves. Cause that really is what it's all about. Like, you living your uniquely inspired creative life, you building the life that is perfect for you and me building life that's perfect for me, they're gonna look different. <laughs> like everyone who's been on the podcast, everyone, it may look different on the surface, the, the, the path that we are each on. And yet that is the invitation. It's not live like paling, <laughs> it's, Oh, Paling's living like Paling. Paling is living like the way that Paling wants to live and like enjoys living. And maybe Michael, like, and then Michael gets to live the way Michael just like <laughs> is inspired to live and serve in that way. And that's just so wonderful that we, like, I'm so happy to be in this moment versus, you know, just all of the years where I spent either comparing myself to the way that other people were saying that life should be lived or just, you know, models of what a successful life looks like. Basically all these external things that it's like, oh, I should be there or I should be there. Or even comparing myself to myself, like being comparing myself to a future projected version of who I envision, you know, that's quite oh, yeah. a thing. Yeah. A big one. Yeah. It's like, what is my, those... go ahead those projections come from outside biases. And yes, out the, I kind of feel like it's, mm, there's those outside programming, but then also when we encounter things like that, it's like the way that we respond to that provides information and feedback. It's like the gift of jealousy or comparison in and of itself, like the function of that, it can, you know, if we reframe our relationship to that transitioning jealousy to inspiration, it's like, 
if I see the way that someone is living or even my vision of, you know, <laughs> I have a very beautiful, splendid vision of like my, me living and just like getting to steward multiple beautiful properties around the world and just living this like luxurious, comfortable life that as the like spiritual bajillionaire that I am. And so if I have that vision for <laughs> that vision, you are all yes, you exactly. I am already. And so that vision though, it's like, I could be comparing myself to that and be like, Oh, but I'm not there yet. But like you said, I am that already. And also those visions, whether it is in the form of somebody else, that maybe there are people that we like admire or as they say, look up to or put on a pedestal in some way, mm -hmm. what they're reflecting to us is information about something that we desire. Like I wouldn't, you know, there are people whose lives I look at and I don't feel any jealousy <laughs> or I don't feel any compare, like none of that is like awakened. Mm -hmm because I don't desire to live that way. But then there are other, like whether it's, you know, just other lives or other visions or other things that do activate something because there is a part of me that sees that for myself. And, and the shift of going from something being jealousy or comparison to inspiration is believing it's possible, right? Yeah. It's believing it's possible for me that, the thing, the way that this person is living their life, the way that this person has built or created their life, like how amazing is that? One, just how wonderful that that person is just enjoying life. Like that makes me so happy knowing that like they're just illuminating the world with just enjoying what the world has to offer and being in, in that space. And then also be like, oh, there's something about the way that they're living. This, there's something about this thing or this thing that seems external to me that gives me insight into what is true and present, what is alive. Like the fact that, you know, seeing, I've grown up seeing singers performing on stage or just, you know, like Harry Styles at Coachella or something, like just watching videos of that and just seeing him like, freely fully expressed as himself like there's something in that that i that activates something that i'm like yeah well i could do that too or i would want to be in that space of just creative freedom and connection and all of those things and then the like that third piece it's like remembering that everything that i feel like i desire is already here now that Harry Styles and Coachella, well, I'm not here to be Harry Styles. I'm here to be <laughs> Paling. But that freedom of creative expression is available and accessible to me right now. And I actually already live it. So, yeah, yeah. I, I think you, you mentioned something that um, listening to right now is a little fixated on. And I was really intrigued by is that you possess a strength that a lot of us are trying to learn in our life or don't realize that we need to learn. Hmm. And uh, maybe for the people listening is, how did you learn or what was the transition from you comparing yourself to people and changing the perspective to inspiration? Hmm. Um, especially in a day in, you know, I, I work for a lot of young people and hmm. sometimes it's a little bit of a concern to me when mm. I work with my younger students and I find themselves comparing themselves to other people online. I have a student that um, he's, he's a, a toddler. He's a uh, preteen, I guess. He's not a toddler, he's preteen. And he has a YouTube channel and I help him with it. And uh, we put up uh, you know, music yeah. videos and all these things. And he's just like really concerned with the views. Mm -hmm. It's like, hey, you don't have to you don't have to worry about the views. This is a, this is something for you. Consider it like a like a video mm -hmm. diary. You can go back and look at all the different songs that you've learned. And you can share it with with your favorite friends, with your family, mm. you know, your family um, all around the country or the world. You can see this, and um, and that took a while of you know just like talking to them and helping them understand this. Um, but I'm noticing that even at a very young age, there's like all these different points of comparison mm -hmm. um, that begin to kind of um, seep into your life. So 
what was your transition for you from yeah. realizing that it wasn't a, a comparison, but that you could turn that into inspiration? Yeah. yeah. I mean, that's a wonderful question. I love that you're supporting him doing that. I can relate to that because, you know, I've been... April, I was very, like, just excited about Instagram, but then as May shifted, I just have been, like, totally off it and just, like, not really interested in that, but I've been excited about YouTube, which is something I've continuously circled back to, and yeah, you know, I post a video and maybe there's, like, one view, or maybe there's, like, ten views, but it's, it's, again, creating it not for the views, but because I just, like, I love creating it, and it's, it's so fun for me, and it's not that those thoughts don't arise. Like it's the, the thought of, oh, I, you know, just that aware, like there's a, the awareness that I have of the thought, noticing the lack, the seeming lack of views. And so it's what the shift was for me is, is just really my relationship with myself and my relationship to thoughts. So comparison for me, the way that I experience it is, And I find it helpful if anyone is familiar with internal family systems therapy or parts work, I find it really helpful to kind of like anchor certain energies in like talking about them as these parts, like these sub parts of the system that is me. And so the energy that is comparing, like the part of me that would be comparing myself to another, really just befriending it. <laughs> And that's the same thing with judgment and, and my reaction to like critical thinking. It's because I've had such a, such a journey in my relationship with the, the inner critic and the judger and the comparison. And so that part that is comparing me to others and is looking, oh, but they're doing this, like I'm not good enough or I should be somewhere else. If I ask that part directly, what is it like, what is it? intention what does it desire for me what's what is it called like looking to create in my life that it believes is lacking and for me any not enoughness or insecurity or anything it just wants me to like be happy and loved and feel belonging and celebration and acceptance from others like there's so much stuff and i mentioned this around you know, under the umbrella of like tribal consciousness, but that idea that like humanity, that we are, whether it's our local community or the internet, like the entire global community, it's this tribe and not wanting to be kicked out of the tribe because I created something and then nobody looked at it <laughs> or I, I created something and then somebody was like, oh, that's bad. Or, you know, you produce something and nobody buys it, whatever, whatever the metric is and just wanting to feel like I belong in the tribe. And so connecting with that good intention of that part, which really in essence is always, at least in my exploration of all the, diff the, the infinite parts that have popped up, it really just is love. It's wanting to feel loved and safe. And from that place, it's like, okay, let me just like give myself a hug. <laughs> let me just like give myself a hug and remind myself that one, this is just a part, like, am I only the one that compares or am I that which includes that which compares? Like, that's just this energy that is, you know, passing on through and believes like this energy from the perspective of that part, it is in service to my greatest good. Like that part believes that by pointing out all of the flaws in me, it is helping me be better. It is helping me be loved, helping me be accepted. And then I just get the choice of reminding that part, hey, look, we are loved. <laughs> like, I love you. Like, this part, you belong in me. Like, you belong with me. So I get to give myself directly the thing that this part believes is lacking. And there's actually something really profound in that. It, it's powerful. Absolutely. Yeah. Everything you're saying is really insightful. And it's... it's uh really struck in a chord with me. Mm. So that's beautiful. Thank you. Yeah. yeah. And even that though, right? That like your, any of your students who you encounter, if comparison or insecurity arises as 
guides, as facilitators, as educators, we get to see people in their wholeness. Like we have the opportunity to see people in their wholeness and see that this energy of insecurity that is arising is not the whole, like that is just one part that happens to be passing through. And that at least really helps me in engaging with other humans and just like the world around me. Because I remember that even if it seems like comparison is present, like they are that which includes the comparison. And even if we zoom out like even more, in what I've experienced and believe is true for myself, I am also choosing to experience any like quote unquote negative energy, like that comparison or insecurity. It's like, I'm choosing for that to arise in my experience and be part of this human life so that actually anything that seems like it's shadow, I get to just embrace with love. And I know that that's part of my, how I serve is with just by meeting these parts within myself with love, that has a ripple effect, like just infinitely across time space. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. That's I'm just letting all that. Sink yeah. So thanks for sharing. Yeah. That's beautiful. I, I'd love, I've never heard it put that way, but it's so true and it's so accurate that those feelings arise from a place of, of wanting to experience and feel belonging, mm -hmm. love, and part of the tribe, right? Yeah. Community is so important. Um, I'm going to use that for my students. I'm gonna, yeah, I'm so I'm glad. Gonna, yeah. <laughs> thanks, for, thanks for sharing. Appreciate yeah. That. And so in all of this, I'm, I'm so grateful for your questions and I, you know, I'm really happy to, to share. And I think one thing that comes up that I'm wondering for you in this present moment and like you, before we started recording, you alluded to some transitions in your life. What is the life that you are inspired to build for yourself now? Like what life are you building and creating now? Yeah, that's a, that's a great question. I'm in pursuit of it. I'm discovering it. And in discovering, I'm realizing that it's a lot of rediscovering. Mm -hmm. um, I believe that everyone's born with a knowing mm -hmm. and that that gets kind of um, tarnished over time and you don't see it as clearly, right? reflection of who you are, who you want to be in the mirror. Mm. Um, and sometimes those influences are good. Most of the time they are. And then at a certain point you have a choice to make your life yours again. Mm -hmm. And so I feel that in a very metaphorical way, that's kind of what I've been experiencing. Mm -hmm. And, um, with a lot of help of just a lot of spiritual leaders and therapy, I've come to realize that what, what I've really always wanted was to travel. And, mm. um, yeah, when I was a kid, so like, my, <laughs> I think the first thing I wanted to do as a kid was become a marine biologist. Yeah. Um, I feel like everyone at one point wanted to be either an archaeologist or marine biologist. <laughs> That's not why. Everyone wanted that. And for me, it was marine biology, maybe yeah. archaeology for a bit until I had that realization. I was like, well, when I'm older, everything will be discovered. So, <laughs> so I wanted marine biology. And then I just realized that the ocean was so massive and there was so much of the ocean to see. And I was obsessed with maps as a kid and I just loved looking at the ocean. So I started seeing land and just like memorizing names of countries and flags, you know, that was like mm -hmm. one of my hobbies as a kid. Mm -hmm. And, um, I think the first time I went to Europe, my parents took me, I was, um, I was young. I was maybe eight or nine and I was just like, blown away by being immersed into, you know, just a totally different culture, some mm -hmm. different languages, different food, just like everything was so different. And I, I loved it. And, um, I just knew I was like, I want to travel. And I actually wrote this, uh, biography as part of one of my school projects mm -hmm. with it, write an autobiography when you're in fifth grade before I went to middle school, we had to finish this project. And I just, um, I actually flipped through this at home over Christmas. Um, and I found that what I wanted to do as a kid mm -hmm. was 
when I was 11 was to travel. Mm. And then fast forwarding a little bit, when I discovered music as a passion, which was later, I, was, um, I started playing music really for myself when I was 13. Um, I have a little bit of music experience before that, but really I felt like it was for me when I was 13. Mm-hmm. And when I was 15 or 16, I was sent to a summer camp for music and I couldn't believe that you like I could do that all day and I was like this mm. is the coolest thing and then I put it together I was like this is what I have to do I'm gonna play music and I'm gonna travel the world yeah <laughs> and over time going to like you know no um, I went to a very academic high school mm-hmm. so graduating from high school you know like, kind of give you all these different ideas of like you need to figure out what you want to do with your life now so you can do mm-hmm. it in college and then you graduate from college and you're on the right path and it's all very like um yep very absolutely mm-hmm. and um so i i fell into that and um and it was good for me to trust it for a bit because it got to me got me to where i am now and i'm very thankful for my education and all the experience that i've had um and it was particularly after college where um you know when you work in a creative when you go to like a creative college i don't know if this is true to all art schools, but I want, you know, I went to music school. I went to mm-hmm. uh, Berkeley College of Music in Boston. And uh, I say in Boston because it's not not Berkeley in California. Yes, yeah. <laughs> not UC Berkeley. And when I was there, we, like when you're in this kind of school setting for something creative, they're obviously doing their best job to kind of point you in different directions of how to live off of what mm, you've been studying mm-hmm. for four years. So after those four years, I was like, okay, well, these are the next things I have to do to make a living mm. and after my music and to, and to do that. And I kind of did that for a bit when I moved to Nashville. So after Boston, I moved to Nashville, Tennessee, where I currently reside. And what were those things? Just out of curiosity, like what are their tips the for? One the four? Yeah. Oh, go ahead. Tips yeah. for what? tips for you know you've studied music how do you survive like how do you how do you make money from like what were their tips that you followed in like moving to nashville it it depends on what you're doing in music yeah it's um first thing i'll tell you first tip is that trust that there's space for you in the music industry oh that's a um, great tip <laughs> it's it's really really big and it wasn't until i went to school that i realized like wow there's so much room for people mm. in music. um it's everywhere Right mm. from like jingles on the radio, um, you have shotguns, which are five second short clips of like a commercial or the radio station jingle. Mm. Um, you're listening to music, right? Like I'm obsessed with looking up the composers behind all the Marvel films. Mm. Um, I was watching, what was I watching? I think Black Panther is uh, Ludwig Göransson. Oh my God, he's amazing! He's yeah. Um, there's music there. Right, and even within that film, there's um, like the music team is maybe twenty to fifty people. Right, you have all the players that play the instruments, mm-hmm. the people who did programming because there's digital instruments, and the people who wrote it, and a lot of times the people who write it, like a little secret about some of the best com- like film composers is that they'll write the music but they don't orchestrate it. Mm-hmm. Um, so they'll come up with a melody and then someone else will sit down and arrange it to a whole orchestra. Mm-hmm. Um, then you have to do all the post-production stuff. Yeah. Um, you know, there, it's just like, you get the point. The point mm-hmm. is the space. So I'd say that's the first thing. Um, I'm but that's afraid. like, ju- that's just, just pausing on that for a moment because it is a really significant point that whether it's in the music industry or even just in the world, like there is space for us. <laughs> Like there is more than enough space for us to take up space. And I love the forests and the redwood trees because they're these massive organisms, massive beings with deep, wide roots. And there is space for all of the redwood trees to grow as tall as they can be and as they they are here to to be, be, right? And like the same for us, regardless of, you know, I think that some people look at like, industry metrics or just looking at like if you go into blah 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 whatever it is mm-hmm. there is space just honing it just there is that, space yeah <laughs> yeah the first thing you have to know and then you just have to ask yourself 
I mean, just say yes to a lot of things mm. in music. You will do a lot of work that you don't like at first. And that will do two things for you. It will get you closer to what you do like. And it will also mm. help you realize um, who you want to work with, right? Mm -hmm. It's a very social industry. Mm. And um, there's people who are easier to work with than others. And that mm -hmm. makes a really big difference when you're um, trying to meet deadlines. Yeah. So um, that's it, it's, it's a great question that you asked. But it can get very specific specific yeah you know, for the the lane that i'm in yeah is i'm doing creative work so um at first it's just diversifying yourself and doing as much as you can and then slowly you'll kind of figure out this is what i really like to do mm -hmm. and and you'll get there yeah and that's just part of it and and so to finish answering your question is that after moving to nashville and i did all these different things I realized that there was um, something that I was missing. Mm. And I've come to the conclusion that I wasn't making music for myself. Mm. I was trying really hard to live up to this college degree that I had mm. in academia and kind of, you know, a little bit of the pressure from uh, be it like school I went to, my parents, my family, you know, kind of like, oh, you, you know, you did this thing, go make money off of it. Mm. Um, and so I was measuring my life and my success and financial reward as opposed to just the love and the time and effort that I was giving to myself. Mm -hmm. So part of uh, what I've been doing right now is just kind of circling back to like, okay, I want music making to be for myself first. Mm -hmm. And so that's kind of, the, that's uh, part of the path that I'm on is that music is going to be for me first and foremost. And it's also going to give me a lot of, first of all, it's, it's going to serve myself. Secondly, um, I hope that whatever I make will inspire others. And then on a more business side of things, I think that when people start listening to what it is that I can, I can create as my own creative, people will come to me for what I do. Mm -hmm. And before I was going to serve others, I would go to them and mm. adjust myself to them. And it wasn't mm. quite a collaboration. And I found, my, I found myself feeling really afraid of really expressing myself and taking like creative risks mm. and uh, I'm a big risk taker. So I kind of like, I was missing that part yeah. of my life. So I'd say as a creative, that's what I'm really looking forward to. And I've um, already on my way with that. Yeah. And I, will, I will be releasing a lot of new music and probably in the new year, uh, realistically, but I have yeah. a new band, I'm doing a solo project, I already have a song that's ready to go, go uh. out. And, um, and I have my producer project coming with tapes, uh, which we can also talk yeah. about, uh, which is my retreat project. Mm -hmm. uh, which I love, yeah. you know, I love that that exists. And just that was so poignant what you had said of, because really when we, with anything, when we turn inward first and we just create from what is true and inspired and coming through us, and then the world just gets to respond and to receive that and then just offer that feedback because you're strengthening really the magnet that you are like the light mm. that you shine. And then that just by being, and then by being truly freely expressed in that and like your truest version, then you actually attract those who are aligned with your truest version rather than like a hidden or masked or altered version of the South. Like if we're, if I'm hiding who I am, then I'm going to be, a, I'm going to be connecting with people who are either connecting with my mask version or who are also like hiding who they are versus if I'm just like all out there, then it's kind of like, take it or leave it. You, you know, clearly and quickly if I am for you or if I resonate with you and the things that you create. And that's absolutely, it's like people will get to encounter your music and be like, oh my gosh, that's exactly there. There's something there that I connect with and that I desire for to for my creative project, right? Yeah, it's an, it's an yeah. immediate limits test. Yes, 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 so, yes. So so exciting. Thank you. Yeah, and I, I think that that in hand with the traveling is that I realized that I just uh, I, I um I don't know I feel very stagnant right now in Nashville and I I need to just move and, and go somewhere and when I when I travel I like to be in places for extended periods of time mm. 
Um, I don't like to travel and meet someone for like a day. Mm-hmm. Um, th- though I'm not opposed to it. Um, yeah. <laughs> I will do that. I'll entertain it. I prefer to go somewhere and get to know what it's like there. Mm-hmm. Um, especially if I'm going really far, like abroad. So I kind of came to this realization where I was like, well, how do I do all these things? And I, I think that it's going to be changing over time. Mm-hmm. Um, and part of this kind of has to do with education. Um, is that I had this weird kind of um, hiccup in, in what I was doing with my education work because I was being very hard on myself because I felt that it was hindering me from doing my music work mm. and that I wasn't, um, and, and this is when I was still holding that bias or that um, inherited, yeah, that inherited bias of like, are oh, you supposed to do something with your mm. And I was like, oh, I'm not like seeing through my mm. degree, like what I did with it. And so I had this like this moment where it clicked. And I was like, but I am, I totally am. And that took me a very long time to realize. Um, and a point where I was actually, um, it was really bringing me down. I was having a very mm. hard time kind of like waking up. I was like, oh, do I like, is this really what I want to do? Like, I thought I liked education and I'm stuck in this. And I just mm. felt like I was like really funneling myself down in that. And now I'm realizing that it's something that I get to, I get to share my passion with other people and it also gives me all the comforts that I need to be a creative, mm-hmm. right? And that was the things that it wasn't so much the problem with being an educator, it was the way that I was spending my time as a creative. And the mm. way that I was spending my time as a creative was was wrongly because I was serving other people instead of my, myself first. Mm. Um, and so I was like, well, as a teacher, like, I, I, all my classes are online. Um, I exclusively work uh, remote or from home or online, uh, whatever you want to call it. So I can travel. So I was kind of like, you know what? I want to figure out a way where I can get paid to make music and travel. I was like, mm-hmm. I already have the education side. I got that. And so I started looking at artist residencies. Mm. And um, so a little bit of what I'm going through right now is I'm actually about, I'm packing my room today. Um, I took a break to speak with you, Yeah. Um, but I'm looking around and I'm in my house and um, I'm packing everything up and I'm moving to New York for two months. Mm. So I was telling my, uh, my old roommate, one of my best friends here in Nashville about this transition that I've been going through and I kind of had like a realization. I came to this epiphany and I was like, this is what I have to do. I have to travel and I, I, I want to do artist residencies and I just want to like come up with like little concepts and put them out in the world and see what happens. Cause I would consider myself more of an artist as a, as a creative mm-hmm. but music is my main medium through which I express mm-hmm. myself. Mm-hmm. Um, but I like to really make like, um, multimedia things. So I told her this and then she literally just sends me a text message the next day. And she's like, Hey, I know this isn't exactly what you're looking for, mm-hmm. but I think you're a great fit for it. And so I opened the, the this application and it says seeking songwriter, producer, and educator. And I was like, "Those are it's you." And I was like, "That's me." And I'm like reading through the requirements and everything. Oh. I, was like, I was like, "Holy cow! This is this is me. This is everything that I'm already doing." And it's um, I'm essentially well, I applied for the job and I got the job. Fast forward through that, and yes, thank you. And um, I'm going to be the music director for a sleepaway camp in upstate New York. Mm. And um. Some of the pros are that um, I'm going to be living, I have my own cabin on a lake in the middle of the Cats, of Catskills, New York. Yeah. And um, when I'm not working, so I'll, I'll have, we'll have a work day from 10 to 6. When I'm not working, I have a music studio. Oh my gosh. So I'm going to be running, I'm going to be the music studio director and everything. So I'm going to have this music studio. So I'm like, you know, when I'm not working, I'm going to go up and I'm, I'm just going to make like my own music. And so I'm treating it as my own artist retreat. Mm -hmm. And at first there was also a little bit of resistance where I was like, this isn't Mm. exactly what I wanted. Like, am I supposed to do this? But it was, it was this kind of tug of war until I came Mm. to the conclusion where I was like, I put this out into the universe. I was like, I wanted this. Mm -hmm. And it's not exactly the way I wanted it, but this is an opportunity for me to test if this is really the way that I want to live my life. Mm. Um, or at least for the next few years, I think that eventually I am a nester. So eventually I will mm-hmm. want to settle down and stay somewhere. Um, but I think that right now I have this energy that, um, uh, I'm just being drawn to like move around and go places and see and experience and create. And 
this literally fell on my lap. And um, even the interviewer, the person who gave me the job, uh, the hiring manager, even he told me, he was like, it seems like you were born for this job. Like everything <laughs> in your life is just like perfect. You're the, oh you're like the candidate for this. And so I had the hardest time. I was like, do I really want this? So I took the job and I'm really excited to do it um, because I did realize that it's totally aligned with what I want to do. Mm-hmm. And um, yeah, I get to do all the things that I love in one place. And on top of that, I have a deadline and a frame mm-hmm. um, inside of where, what I want to complete um, a project. I work really well. I've gotten to know myself and I work really well within deadlines. Mm. So it's kind of like, hey, I want something done within a week month whatever it is mm-hmm. it's kind of like, okay then i can kind of like put my hand yeah. on that so now i know that i have x amount of time to finish these these personal goals that i want to uh complete there so i'm hoping to record some you know some music for my own solo uh solo project put it together in some kind of like art form multimedia and then put it out into the world later this year mm-hmm. or at the beginning of next year oh my gosh i i've just been having such a um it feels like as you're talking and describing this entire chapter in this transition, like my heart is just like exploding and like dancing and there are actual like tears coming to my eyes because I'm just so, ex- I'm just like so excited for you and I can just so, like the everything, just the stars, the cosmos, the earth, like everything is just so aligned and it is that your all of the moments, all of the experience that you've had, like have led you to this thing falling into your lap that's literally what happened to me after i graduated college and i was like i don't even know what i'm gonna do and then this opportunity fell into my lap it wasn't just like you're saying it wasn't quite what i expected like for me it was this being an ra and a media communications and marketing person at a high school a private catholic all boys high school so it was like very not you know I couldn't have like fig I couldn't have imagined that and yet it's like when it was there it's like this is providing everything that you get to now explore and really live and also with the piece about the travel it's like of course you're of course you're called to travel cuz you're and I don't know if you resonate with the language of like Starseed or how just how you kind of conceptualize or experience your own soul on this earth and your own spirit and essence but at least in my experience of, of you and that is like part of being kindred spirits is that we've like traveled together in the star like we've had we've traveled together in the stars and we just happen to be here on earth now and part of that is a lot of those like us who are here to bring through energies through art and creativity and even and like educating sharing we're bringing through frequencies that haven't been on earth for centuries haven't been on earth maybe even ever and so our physical bodies are these literal vessels to bring through this divine creative inspiration these energies that illuminate inspire light up this world and part of that like travel is a common thing of because it's literally by our, our physical bodies being anchored in different locations, we're activating the planetary grid in those locations. And we're activating the community, those that we're surrounded by in that place. And then you just get to like plant these seeds and ripple out these like amazing Michael specific creative musical, you know, inspiring energies in all the places. And also the fact that it was like songwriter, producer and educator, it's it can't get more clear than that, that like, that's where, <laughs> that's just like, the, it just fell right it, on my lap. It was like, yeah, you wanted it, go for it. So. And then, and even just like the element of resistance is that's so someone said this to me that oftentimes we experience the most fear when we're confronted with our purpose. <laughs> it's just like the most resistance when it's like, we're faced with the thing that we know that we are here to do and be and, and show up for. And, yeah just props to you and your willingness to say yes and like because it's really it's like that's the destiny that you're creating and the destiny that you're choosing and i'm so excited to get to experience whatever it is that and i'm i feel so privileged to be connecting with you in this like snapshot of like the quote-unquote before and to get to like hours before (laughs) yeah and to get to check in and see where this journey takes you over the the coming months because i feel like i'm in a very similar like 
snapshot of before and wherever yeah just i'm just so excited yeah i'm ecstatic i'm i'm really excited and i think that this for me will be a trial mm-hmm. to see if if i want to do this if you know because there's also that part of the resistance was like but i do have a lot going on for me mm-hmm. here in nashville and i i wouldn't like I, I i wouldn't have a bad experience if i would stay but mm-hmm. i would be missing out on having a different experience mm-hmm. and um through this experience, I'm actually like a lot of people are starting to talk to me about about different arts, res, like artist residencies. And one of my current hobbies, um, something I channel my learning through, is that I love to learn about thousands of things. But sometimes that's hard because then you just know a little bit of everything. So it's like you know, I kind of want to channel my learning energy and spirit through one thing. So mm. recently, that's been the national parks. Mm. Um, so I've, I've made it a goal to go and travel and see all the national parks. Yeah. And, through that, I've actually been learning that they have artist residencies at the parks. <gasps> where you can wow. live at the parks and um, they'll give you stipend and everything to go and create. Oh know? my gosh. So I, I, I've been looking into that. So I was like, I want to see how much I enjoy this being away from home for mm-hmm. like a month or two at a time. And, um, and then take it from there. But yeah, yeah. Right, right now my goal is to have Nashville as my home base. Mm-hmm. And to maybe, you know, travel four to five months a year, um, and just go and create. So figure out ways to make to make that happen. And this uh, is step number one, starting to, tomorrow, today. Oh really, my gosh. I feel like the journey's already started. I'm packing up and everything. So, and isn't it amazing that what seems like step number one, there have been these infinite steps that have led up to this this now step number one and then there's just gonna keep being it's just one step at a time and also it's just so amazing to reflect on not just the steps that you've taken but all of the infinite alignment around you like in like for that for your friend to be aware of that program in new york and to send you that and like just all of the things that align so that Absolutely, yeah. yeah. And I'm um, I'm in a point in my life right now where I feel that I'm on a very, uh, I'm on a track of positivity and of mm. openness to uh, just the synchronicity of everything. Mm-hmm. And it's when you're in these moments in your life that you start seeing how all these little mm-hmm. um, stepping stones add up. Um, and I find that when I'm, um, you know, maybe, because we all go through those moments in our life where maybe we're a little more engaged with the negative side of our mm. feelings, um, which are just as important because those are, that's where the big reflections come from. Um, you seem to like kind of put on some, sometimes blinders and you don't see mm. how everything aligns. And right now I'm like, I just feel so grateful that I'm in this place where I'm seeing how all these little pieces are aligning and part of, and I mentioned this before at the mm-hmm. beginning where, um, this audio thing, uh, me editing your podcast mm-hmm. was a big alignment for me as well, personally, because I was like, I'm trying to figure out how I can have more work that's on the go, or I'm not mm. tied down to Nashville necessarily. Yeah. And then this came up, and I was like, this is it. <laughs> yeah. I put it out there, and you know, it's the same oh. thing for you on the other side. Are like, oh my god, I put this out there, and, and, and it all worked out. Yeah. And I, it's been honestly, it's been such a pleasure. It's been such a pleasure listening. I love working on your podcast. Oh, I'm so glad. I'm really talking to you today. (laughs) And the people you bring on are so interesting and like-minded. And Mm. you have a very... You have a really good ability to navigate a conversation with people and make sure that they get to say everything that they want to say. And I think that probably comes from a place of just observation and uh, high... um, what's it called emotional quotient and everything so it's just uh, really really pleasing to listen to all of your podcasts oh, I'm so glad uh, and I'm so grateful for that feedback too and the fact that you are here now and you get to like you are one of those like you are one of those uh, and yeah I feel like this is a beautiful place to open it up and 
you know, if I, we, I mentioned this cause I had a, I had a vision of this before we, we recorded of you possibly sharing some guitar or playing some music cool. for us, which I think would just be, I would love to experience. Um, but yeah, whatever you feel inspired, it's all you. Yeah. So I would, um, um, and, you know, for the listeners, Paling always has, um, her speakers share something at the end and what I would like to um, inspire and everyone listening is to listen mm. and not only to listen to to themselves but to everything around them and um, sometimes a really easy way to do that is some of the things that I do that help me bring me to the moment with my ears are quite literally just pulling on my phone and recording a minute's worth of um, a voice memo. Hmm. It's funny how when you sit down and just like listen, then you can start to hear so far away, hmm. and uh, you start hearing like maybe a dog barking two blocks over, children hmm. playing, mm-hmm. maybe there's a water leak, whatever it might be. And you just start hearing all these different things, the birds chirping. Um, so I think that's a form of listening, um, and listening is just something you have to exercise in a lot of ways, making sure that you're listening to to the people you're talking to. When you listen mm-hmm. to them, ask them questions that are going to help you learn more about them, mm. not questions that are going to lead them to your opinion. Mm. And, um, and when you're listening to music, um, try thinking about where the sound is taking you is the sound, mm. you no. Know, going back to what I said before, where sometimes sound is like, a we ex- can come to experience. And sometimes this is beautiful too. I like listening to music this way as a homogenous mm-hmm. blob or wave that just hits you. It's like just this thing that hits you all at once. But when you, well, when it's available to you to sit down and question, okay, what are all the different parts inside of this wave that are making me feel this way? Is it a rise? Is it a down? Am I feeling calm? Mm-hmm. Is it needing more energy? Oh, you're... Uh, yeah, I did, <laughs> my neighbors are doing their lawn. It just, it was, it was kind of, it was fine, but then this like extra rev just really came in and, and, but isn't that a great, you know, I love welcoming all the things that are present into this spiraling present moment. And what a gift that we have these sounds that we can welcome and Absolutely. listen to. There's, the this is, lower. this is something that I really, you know, reflect on and just, cause listening, we, we listen, not just with our ears. Like it's not just this like physical mechanism. And I'm sure you experience this too. It's like a full body listening. It's a multi-sensory experience of listening to that, which is outside as well as within. Like I listen to, we talked about the, the energy of like comparison or like that is it's a listening. It's a listening to that part, listening to the energy. And even the fact that now we, we acknowledge the sound and now it's ended. Like we listen to it and then now it's complete. <laughs> How wonderful. Yeah, it's complete. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah I love listening is a word, you know, we, Listening can mean to use your ear to, to pay attention to, right? So mm. I think that if you um, are having trouble listening, then just um, you know paying attention to things. Start with your ears, mm. it be, and it's often something that's very underappreciated. I think or underestimated, rather. Mm. Um, so on that note, I would love to invite you to listen to some guitar. Yeah. I don't have anything prepared, so I'm just going to improvise. Um, can you, let's see, tell me how well can you mm-hmm. hear this? Great. Excellent. Um, I'm just going to play and see what happens. Mm-hmm. Thank mm-hmm. you. 
<laughs> oh my gosh, what a gift. Oh, thank you yeah. so much. And thank you. Thank thank you for having me. Oh this my is gosh. So fun. Yeah. And even I feel like that was just the perfect way to bring us into the magic of the present moment and the gift of music and all of the things that we got to spiral within and around today. So thank you. And thank you to everyone listening, watching, experiencing this with us.